And for all of our guests that are here for the very first time tonight, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. My name's Chris Shepler. I'm pastor of Victory Bible Baptist Church in Normal, South Carolina. Been here all week long, and folks just have uh, called me Dr. Chris. You can call me Chris. You can call me whatever you want to call me. I'm leaving. <laughs> if you're here tonight as a guest, you're here probably because somebody invited you. And they invited you to come tonight because they're concerned about you. They're concerned that you're able to say on the authority of the Word of God that you know that you're going to go to heaven when you die. I didn't know that for years in my life. Ever since I've been a baby in diapers, two weeks old, I've been raised in church. But for years... Going to church, I spent years saying, well, I hope I'm going to heaven. I, I think I'm going to heaven. Maybe I'm going to heaven. But I wasn't really certain of what would happen to me if I were to die. This service tonight is just about taking the Bible and simply explaining to you what the Bible says about how to go to heaven. And there are basically three thoughts that I want to share with you here this evening. And we're just going to complement what we've already just seen. If you're here tonight and you want to be absolutely certain of going to heaven when you die, the first thing that you need to realize is that we all have a problem. And we have a problem that, I hate to put it like this, but it's true. We have a problem that we can't solve. And the Bible tells us that that problem that we cannot solve is the problem of sin. The problem of our sin. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now that's from the Bible. That's the Word of God. God says we all have sinned. Truth of the matter is, I've sinned, you've sinned, we've all sinned. I don't know you, you don't know me. But according to the Word of God, we've all sinned in God's sight. Sin is anything that we do wrong, anything that we say, do, or think that violates God's word or God's commandments. God's word says, thou shalt not lie, and as Pastor Foster pointed out, we've all told some lies, have we not? Therefore, we've all sinned against God. And because we've sinned against God, the verse not only says we've all sinned against God, but the Bible says in that verse that because we've sinned against God, we've come short of the glory of God, which means that we've come short of what it takes to get to heaven. See, this is a problem. We want to go to heaven, do we not? Yes, I don't know anyone who wouldn't want to go to heaven. Not in the right mind. I want to go to heaven, but I have a problem. And that problem is my sin. And because I've sinned against God, I've come short of what it takes to get to heaven. Anybody here... A handyman around your house. Any of you guys do handiwork around your house? Getting little projects? All right. I do that every once in a while. You know, you're building something, and you get out there. Maybe you're using some two-by-fours, and, uh, and you cut it too short. How many of you guys ever done that? Huh? Ever cut it? Yes. Okay. Anybody that's a handyman, uh, she's done it too. All right. Cut the two-by-four too short. How many of you have done this? All right. You cut the two by four too short. And so you say, I'm going to get another one. I'm going to cut a little bit of piece off of that other one. And I'm going to take that little piece and I'm going to nail it to this one. And it'll work. It'll be fine. How many of you have done that? All right. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. As soon as you put the nail in that little piece that you're nailing to that two by four, it just splits. I learned a long time ago that when I cut a two by four too short, that I needed to just make another trip to Lowe's. You folks have Lowe's down here? All right. And so, you know, hun, I'll be back. She says, where are you headed? Lowe's. She says, I know what he did. <laughs> he cut it too short. Listen, when it's short, you can't lengthen it, can you? You're short. And when the Bible says that we've come short, we don't have what it takes to get to heaven. We've got a real problem. And first of all, it's the problem of our sin. But that's not only the, for the, the only aspect of our problem. Secondly, not only do we have the problem of sin, we also have the problem of sin's penalty. 
Because you see, God demands a punishment for our sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, in verse 23, that the wages of sin, look at the verse behind me, what's it say? The wages of sin is what? Death. Is death. So the payment for sin is death. If we got what we deserved, literally, we would die and be eternally separated from God forever. You see, death in the Bible means separation. And so when God says the penalty for sin is death, literally, if we got what we deserved, we would all die and have to spend eternity separated from God in the everlasting lake of fire. We have a problem. We have a real problem. It's the problem of our sin. It's the problem of the punishment or penalty for our sin. And the problem doesn't stop there. None of us here tonight are perfect. Not a one of us. Now I know some of the teenagers think they're pretty close. I've been hanging out with them this week. And so some of them think, man, we're, I'm pretty close to perfection. Angie. <laughs> Stephen. Stephen's mother's here tonight. Right? She's saying, there's no way my son is perfect. He doesn't even come close to being perfect. And you know what, El? What? Neither do we. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 21, in verse 27, that not even one lie will enter to heaven. Look what the Bible says. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. Do you understand that one lie is enough to keep us out of heaven? And we don't have to tell. <laughs> That's right. We don't have to tell a lot of lies to keep us out of heaven. Just one. Well, that poses a real problem for us, doesn't it? We're sinners. Since punishment is death, we're not perfect. This is a problem we cannot solve. You know what we need? We need a Savior. We need someone who can save us from sin and sin's penalty and provide for us the perfection that we need to go to heaven. Now when we talk about this idea of a Savior, let me use a little illustration here tonight to sort of illustrate what it means to be a savior. Where we live, we have a huge lake. It's called Lake Murray. We've got 545 miles of shoreline. It is a huge lake. And, uh, and let's say that I'm out on Lake Murray, and I'm in a boat, and uh, the boat is not up to standard. There's no life jackets in the boat. None whatsoever. Now that's against the law. Ought not to do that. It's not smart. It's dumb. But I'm in this boat. I'm out on the lake. And there's no life jackets. I don't know how to swim. And the boat sinks. What am I doing? Yes. Tom's got it right. He said, you're drowning. Now, I don't know about you, but if I were drowning... I would not drown quietly. If I'm drowning, I'm going to yell for help. Aren't you? And so the boat sinks. I have no life jacket. I don't know how to swim. So I cry out and say, help. And Antonio hears me. Yes. <laughs> and he comes pulling up in his boat. He sees me there. And he's looking around and he says, hey, hang on there, man. Just keep, keep you know, treading that water. Hang on there. I've got just what you need. And he, he throws me this book. Ten Easy Lessons on How to Swim. <laughs> he gets in his boat and he takes off. Ten Easy Lessons on How to Swim. Let me ask you a question. Is Antonio a savior? No. Somebody might say he was an instructor, but we would question how well of an instructor he was, would we not? 
That's not a savior. I'm still yelling, screaming. Pat hears me. He comes pulling up in his boat. He jumps out of his boat. He starts swimming all around me. He says, look at me. Follow my example. He starts showing me how to do the backstroke and the dog paddle and all kinds of things. And here I am, drowning. What am I doing? Help! Help! I need a savior. I don't need someone to teach me how to swim. He gets back in his boat. He pulls off. Has he saved me? No. no. I'm still what? Drowning. I'm still drowning. I need, a, I need a savior. So I'm still yelling. I'm still screaming. And Tom shows up. <laughs> Tom shows up. He's out in this lake in a canoe. He's breaking his neck to get to me before I, dr I drown. I'm, I'm dead. And Tom pulls me into his canoe and heads towards shore. And I'm thinking, wow, you're my best friend. I'll be your, I'll be your friend for life, Tom. You have saved me. And he heads towards shore, and he gets about a quarter mile offshore, and, uh, and I get excited that we're getting close to the shore. And so I just stand up in the canoe, and I start jumping up and down. I'm so excited. And Tom takes his paddle and hits me on the backside. <laughs> and off I go in the water, and I'm drowning again. Is he a savior? But you didn't save me. I'm still drowning. Listen to me carefully. A savior is someone who rescues you from a situation from which you could not rescue yourself. I'm drowning. I don't know how to swim. I cannot rescue myself. It takes me all the way to safety. It takes me all the way to shore. What we're talking about here tonight is a spiritual savior. Someone who can save us from sin and its penalty of death and provide the perfection that we need to go to heaven and one day is going to take us all the way to heaven's shore. Jesus didn't come to give us a book on ten easy lessons on how to get to heaven yourself. Jesus didn't come to provide for us an example and say, if you follow in my steps, you'll get to heaven. Listen, his example was perfection. He was the Son of God. We could never do that. He didn't come to take us part way to heaven. He took us all the way to heaven. That's what it means to be a Savior. So our first thought is, we all have a problem that we can't solve. Our second thought is that God has a solution to the problem. Aren't we glad God has a solution to this problem? Amen. We can't get ourselves to heaven, but God can. And God has a solution to that problem. And first of all, I want you to understand, it's not, it's not us. We're not the answer. We're not the solution. We can't do it. Oh, I know that goes against our human pride. I, I know that goes against what's ingrained in us and what we've heard and what we've thought when people say well I'll go to church and I'll be good and I'll get baptized and I'll obey God's laws commands and I'll make sure I treat my neighbor right and I'll do this and I'll do that and they're saying man I'm gonna get myself to heaven I'm gonna do this and this is what's going to save me yet the Bible says for by grace we're saved through faith that salvation is not of ourselves it's the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. Look at what those verses say. Those verses are right from the Bible. It says, by grace we're saved through what? Faith. It doesn't say that we're saved through our actions. It doesn't say that we're saved through what we do. It says we're saved through faith. The faith has got to be in the Savior. We're not the Savior. Christ is the Savior. Notice what the verse goes on to say. By grace we're saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Salvation is not by what we do. There's nothing that we could do that would satisfy 
the penalty of sin. The wages of sin is what? Death. Death. And my friend, you can be as good as good can be, but it will never pay for one sin that you've ever committed. The penalty for sin is death. That's what God demands. And so the Bible says getting to heaven is not of ourselves. It's not by what we do. The Bible says it's the gift of God. What a wonderful thought that is. You want to go to heaven? You can. If you'll accept it as a gift from God. My friend, if you're not willing to accept eternal life or salvation as a gift from God, you'll never have eternal life or salvation. We have a problem that we can't solve. God solved it through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And notice what verse 9 says. Not of what? Works, lest any man should. What that verse is saying is that if we could work our way to heaven, we would stand before God and brag about it. <laughs> Lucky God, look at me. Look at what I did to get here. My friend, we have nothing to brag about before a holy God. We're sinners in need of a Savior. God provided that Savior through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, God's solution to our problem is not us. It's His Son. It's His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the solution. He's the one that can save us from our sin. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 21, For He, referring to God the Father, hath made Him, Jesus His Son, Look at what the Bible says. To be what? Sin for us. Jesus went to a cross. He died in our place. He was buried and rose again the third day. He was made sin for us. He took our sin and died for it on our behalf or in our place so that we could be forgiven, set free, and have a home in heaven. You see, the solution is Jesus Christ. Is what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. God the Father made His Son to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. You see, to go to heaven, we have to be perfect. Are we? No. It's not our perfection that's going to get us there. It's the perfection of God's Son. There's a great exchange taking place in that verse. God says, I'm taking your sin and the punishment of death, and I'm putting it upon my Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to take His righteousness, and I'm going to credit it to your account. Pat has accepted Jesus as his Savior. God sees Pat just as righteous as Jesus Christ himself. Now that's not how we see Pat, and that's not how his wife sees Pat. But that's how God sees him. And that's what enables us to go to heaven. It's not how we see each other. You still see me in my body of sin and death. I see you in your body of sin and death. But God sees us in Christ. And because he sees us in Christ, he sees the very righteousness of God. We have the very righteousness of God, which enables us to have eternal life. So we've thought tonight about the fact that we have a problem. We've thought about the fact of God's solution to the problem. What is our responsibility toward that? What does God expect us to do to go to heaven? And the answer is to believe on His Son, Jesus Christ. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. To be the, our way to heaven. The Bible says in John chapter 3, in verse 16, For God so loved the world. That's everyone sitting in this room and everyone outside this room. God loves every one of us. He loves every one of us so much that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever, what? Believeth in Him. That's talking about believing in Jesus to be your way to heaven. Not believing in your goodness. Not believing in your good deeds. Not believing in your church membership. Not believing in how you behave. But believing in the Savior. The one who came to rescue you. And the only one who can rescue you. Will you believe on Jesus Christ to be your way to heaven? And God says if you will believe on Jesus Christ to be your way to heaven. You should not. But what would you have? Everlasting, Everlasting life. 
We like to use this illustration. If you'd look up here, let me share this with you real quickly. Here tonight, I'm going to let my left hand represent all of us. So what's this hand going to represent? All of us. And I'm going to let this hand represent Jesus Christ. So what does this hand represent? Jesus Christ. Here we are, and I'm going to let my wallet represent sin. The Bible says we all have what? Sin. So I'm going to place the wallet on the hand representing the fact that in God's sight, we're all sinful people. Now to go to heaven, we've got to be without sin. We would have to be perfect. Are we? No. So that sin's got to be dealt with, doesn't it? Because you see, it's our sin that separates us from God. It's our sin that keeps us from going to heaven. God says the penalty for sin is death. So if we got what we deserved, we would die and be eternally separated from God. But look here. This is, represents Jesus Christ. God so loved the world, you and I, that he gave his only begotten son. What did Jesus do for you? He took your sin off of you and paid for it on the cross of Calvary. And the Bible says that whosoever believeth in him would make a choice, a conscious choice, to say, God, I have a problem I can't solve. I can't solve the penalty of my sin. I can't solve my sin problem. But your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, did. He went to a cross. He died in my place. He paid my sin debt to give me eternal life. And God, my choice is to believe on your son, Jesus Christ, to be my way to heaven. And my friend, the moment you believe on Jesus Christ to be your way to heaven, what's the promise of the verse? You should not perish, but what would you have? And so we conclude tonight by asking the question, can you really know you're going to heaven? Can you really know you're going to heaven? And the answer is yes. Look at 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13 with me. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, yes, we can know. The Bible says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have what? Did you see that? Look at those verses. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life. It doesn't say that you may hope that you have eternal life, that you may think that you have eternal life, that you may say, well, maybe I have eternal life. It says, if I choose to believe on the name of the Son of God, if I believe on Jesus to be my way to heaven, because his name means God our Savior. When I believe on his name, I'm believing on him to be my Savior, my one and only way to heaven. And he says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may, what? Know that ye have eternal life. Can a person know where they're going when they die? Yes. Answer is yes. And my friend, if you're here tonight and you've never believed on Jesus, I would urge you to. Why did your friend invite you to come? Because they want you to know. They want you to know that you're going to be in heaven one of these days. There's nothing more important on the face of the earth than knowing that you have eternal life. Nothing more important. Let's pray. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you may be here tonight and never have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be your way to heaven. You can make that decision here tonight to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ right where you're sitting. And I want to encourage you tonight to do that. You can talk to God right where you're sitting here tonight. You don't have to say anything out loud, but you can say something like this, just quietly. God knows your thoughts. He knows your mind. You can say, Dear God, I realize here tonight that I do have a problem that I can't solve. I believe your son went to a cross and died for me to solve that problem, to be my Savior. And right here tonight, the best I know how, I'm trusting your son Jesus to be my Savior. To be the one to take me to heaven when I die. Would you do that if you've never done it before? 
Would you just quietly talk to God in your mind and just tell him, right here tonight, God, I'm making a decision. I have a problem. I can't solve it. I believe that your son went to a cross and died in my place, was buried and rose again the third day to provide me a home in heaven. I trust him right now to be my Savior. I trust him right now to be my Savior. My friend, it's not the words that you say, but the fact that you're trusting Christ that saves. And God knows your heart. He knows if you're trusting in his son, the Lord Jesus, to be your way to heaven tonight. And if you are on the authority of the word of God, you can say that you know that you have eternal life. Now, if you're here tonight and you just prayed that prayer and you told God that you were trusting Jesus to be your way to heaven, I'd like to be able to pray for you. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to slip your hand up and slip it down. It's not that my prayer does anything for you as far as getting to heaven. It's trusting in Jesus. My prayer, just simply raising your hand, says to me, here tonight I heard something I never knew before. It made a lot of sense. I told God I was trusting his son Jesus to be my way to heaven. Chris, I want you to know I did that. I'd like for you to pray for me. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking around. Would you just quietly slip your hand up and slip it down so I could pray for you? Yes, God bless you. Is there someone else tonight by way of uplift to him? Yes, God bless you. Here tonight you're saying I'm trusting Jesus to be my way to heaven. I've never done that before, but here tonight I'm trusting Jesus. I'd like for you to pray for me, Chris. Is there someone else just by way of uplift to him would say pray for me. I'm trusting in Jesus to be my way to heaven. Anyone else? Those of you that just raised your hand, in just a moment, I'm going to have a word of prayer. And when I close that prayer, the pianist is going to play. And I want you to just get up out of your seat, and I want you to come forward. We've got a little pamphlet that we want to give you, and Pastor and Mrs. Hurst and Roder will meet you up here, and they'll just say a word of encouragement to you. And those of you that you raised your hand tonight, when that piano plays, we just want you to get out of your seat, come forward. Everybody else will just sit there with their heads bowed and eyes closed. And someone will talk to you here for just a minute and give you a little pamphlet to encourage you in the Lord. Father, we thank you for these that indicated by the hand tonight they were trusting in your son Jesus to be their way to heaven. We're thankful, Lord, that when a person does that, when they choose to believe on your son, realizing their need, realizing what he did on their behalf, that he died and paid for their sin in full, was buried and rose again the third day, trusting in him and him alone to be their way to heaven. We thank you, Lord, that you save, that you give eternal life. Now, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed and the piano's playing, if you were one of those that raised your hand tonight, would you just get up out of your seat and come forward? Yes, just come right, come right ahead. Yes, just come right ahead. Yes, come right ahead. Father, we rejoice in people coming to accept your Son as Savior tonight. We praise you and thank you for that and give you glory. Thank you for each and every one that's come tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Folks are going to be...